Hey guys, it's Thomas here and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another park spotlight. Today's park is called Silver Key. Um, this was created on the PS Workshop by uh, JLovesM06, uh, who is Jasmine from M&J Games, who some of you may be aware of on YouTube. Um, I will put their channel in the description. Um, M&J Games are uh, it's basically Jasmine and her husband Michael, whose park I did a spotlight on uh, last week on the Trinity Lake Park. Um, they uh, they create Planet Coaster content over there uh, along with some other games um, and I believe Jasmine at the minute has a uh, has a challenge um, series on Planet Coaster on there as well so if you do want to go and check them out as I say I'll leave the I'll leave the link in the description below. Um, the description for this park says vintage meets modern in this art deco inspired theme park features six coasters and family friendly rides. Try playing at sunset or evening for beautiful lighting. Which is what I've, uh, which is what I've done. Um, hence why the, uh, why the sun is setting in the background over there. Um, I have to say, it does, uh, it, it does really add an effect there. I mean, if I, if I just flick this back to, um, you know, back back to night or something, it does get a little bit too dark. Um, but if you have it in the evening, and again, if we say if we flick this back to the day, it doesn't. Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't ha add as much, I don't think, as the as the evening. So yeah, definitely agree that the uh, sunset is the way to go there. Uh, let's just get back here, 6.30, boom, right. Um, oh, actually now I was on 5.30 before, wasn't I? There we go, that's the one. Right, let's get into the park. So, come out of the tunnel. I like I like the um, I like the extended path with a few trees here. I I think I've said it before on a couple of other parks. Having this having this bit of entrance here just um, rather than an immediate park just looks better. And having a monorail, you don't often see monorails like that going around the parks. Um, a lot of people use trains, um, but so, but even a monorail just just as good as a train looks you know looks really enticing as you come in and just having that. You know, just having that as a guest, being down here and seeing that go past, just really kind of gets you in the mood for the uh, for the park. Uh, very nice entrance building. I love the sign, the, the silver key sign there. Looks uh, looks really nice as well as the balconies. Got the security cameras there, and then you got your sort of ticket booth in between. Yeah, really, uh, re really nice entrance building that is. That's uh, it's just a you know very nice way to welcome everyone in I suppose. Uh, nice few planters here, some benching. I like the fact the plaza kind of carries on um, as opposed to you just going straight into the park. The the plaza kind of, you know, you've got a bit more of a walkway, a few more seating areas. What's this, is this a restaurant or no, it's a hotel, Sunset Hotel and Sunset Restaurant over there. Oh yeah, my, my apologies, I didn't see the sign there. Sunset Hotel and Restaurant. I do the, the signage so far. I mean, on on the front building in there looks uh, looks really good. I like how that stands out, and the colours definitely uh, definitely work as well. So right, and then over this side, what have we got here? We've got some uh, food and drink, and this is more this is more like a pink and white area with a bit of a seating area out the back, staff only. Yep, so that's a little staff room inside there. Right, uh, before I get too lost in this park. We will uh, make sure that we go clockwise round because that's the way I normally go, and that touch wood I've never got lost. Um, but we'll go onto the. We'll have a look at the, this grand carousel first. So here's the queue line, which is really good. I like the um, I like the planting in here. I mean that the planting works because of how big it is. Like because it, it with the glass roof, it feels like it's it feels like it's like a, a bit like a greenhouse in a way, but like a, like a natural uh, natural. You know, environment. So yeah, I really, uh, really do like that, and I like the fact there's a gap between the paths that it's not just sort of next to it. And these little, uh, these little lamp, well, lights here. They're not lamps, are they? The short lamp posts. They, uh, they work really well as well. Just being, uh, just going alongside the path. That was quite realistic. And then there is the uh, carousel. Slightly, uh, slightly raised on it. I like the fact that the terrain as well, um, you know, is is slightly uh, slightly up here. So as you you know, you, you have to go up the path here, and it will start. You know, it, it the path is slightly above the ride. Essentially, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, I like the fact that it you know isn't just all on a flat surface. Um, 
Oh, okay, we've got a little uh, signpost. Flamingo Cafe. Restrooms. First aid. Welcome to future millennia. Right. So this appears to be the first area. There's the monorail. Uh, we'll go down to this corner first, I think. What have we got here? Light speed and restrooms. Nice little seating area. I, li I do like the. Uh, I do like having big open spaces. Um, you know, again, not not just at the front of the park. Having big open spaces around the park as well, I think, works really well. Especially to j just to break up that you know that sort of one long path style that um, some people, including myself, have done in the past. So, yeah, I do think having a big open space like that works. Especially above the water as well. I like the fact the water continues. Um, and then bins getting used there. Ah, I might have to remember that one. I normally put the bins on the path as opposed to putting putting them off it. But um, yeah, very very small detail that is uh, probably a little bit insignificant. But no, that's something I've learnt. Um, so yeah, there's, we've got like a toilet and the food and drink building there. And I'm assuming this is light speed, according to that signpost. Anyway. Again, the, the, the queue line, is, I, I do like this style of queue line that she's gone for here. Um, having the trees and the, and the short lampposts down the middle. I, I just think it works really well. And then you've got a fast pass queue just there. And we shall go up to uh, what appears to be light speed. Oh no, drop wind. Where's, so where's the signpost pointing to then? I, unless light speed's a bit further on. Okay, so this is drop wind. So we'll go back in here. So there's drop wind. Uh, I'll just, uh, well, I'll, I'll keep playing until it starts to leave. Um, there's the stats, green across the board, as you can see. So very good stats on this coaster. And they are the other stats, if you are interested. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's take a seat on, uh, on drop wind. Hopefully we're not waiting too long before we can go. This guy, this guy's here's in his glasses. All right, let's go. Very, I, I like the I like the the layout. I like the idea of having like a short um, version of that ride, uh, and I can see why the I can see why the stats are green on it because of the air time and the inversion there. Um, probably a little bit quick going in here um, without sort of banking or breaking a little bit. So I don't know whether it may have been better to sort of extend that and kind of helix round just to slow the train down a bit and then go back into the station. But I think other than that, I I like the uh, I, I do like the you know the use of the vertical lift there uh, and the drop and like I can say the, the whole the building looks good I like the signage here I say signage it's like a it's like a shape signage isn't it it's not um instead of it being words just this sort of um, bespoke little piece there I think that looks really effective but yeah in terms in terms of the coaster it's uh, nice short and sweet um, and I would say, yeah, I mean, the, 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 stat, the stats are green, so the guests aren't going to complain at all. Um, but in, t in terms of rider, I would probably just maybe stretch out the helix here and then break and go in. But other than that, I think that looks, uh, I think that looks spot on. I like, I like the lighting as well. I, I've said it before um, on, on another park spotlight. Uh, this lighting, I, I think, is always, for me, I always find it tricky to find a good spot for it. But it, it works really well in this station. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. So that was a drop wind. But it's, that's what I was looking at, light speed over there. Unless I'm missing something. I must be missing something. Unless the name changed after she put the sign in. 
Uh, and then down here, where are these guys queuing up for? So they're queuing up for the monorail station. We can, uh, we'll have a look at that at the end. I like, uh, I like this bit. This is, this is very nice. It's sort of like shopping area. Shopping area, and ATM, staff building, toilets. That's a very sort of to build that into build that in onto the uh, oh light speed. It's the monorail. There we go. Right, so light speed's the monorail. Got it. So uh, and that'll be why the signs over there because that is the entrance to the monorail station. So yeah, right. Got it. So uh, yeah, no. Really like the fact that the this sort of half of the building is shops and half of it is a station. It's a nice sort of double use of the uh, of the same building. And you know, from the out, from the outside, it I mean that, that looks like a really really good building there. I like these uh, I like these sort of beams or poles, whatever you want to call them, coming off. Um, I think that looks really good. And the big open windows. Um, and then having planting up here is something I've not seen before. So uh, yeah, really, and, th and then you obviously you see parts of the monorail through there as well, big clock. Yeah, really, uh, really nice station building that. Um, I don't want to miss anything, so I'm, I am going to have to keep going back and forth here. Uh, it's got a big, big sort of Ferris wheel, which is a nice, it's a nice centerpiece attraction. You know, if you are going to put one in, it has to be, you know, it has to be eye-catching and in the middle of the park, unless you're going to hide it somewhere. Um, and because they are hard to hide. I mean that that's the perfect location for it, you know, sort of straight as you come in the park entrance, you look at it like that. It's a really nice sort of eye catching uh, eye catching ride to put in. Uh, so we will go we'll go back on this way. And there's a green track going above me. And I don't know what that is yet. <laughs> but I'm sure I'll find out soon. We've got a sundial here. I like the planting man here. The planting around the sundial looks really nice. The palm trees, etc. And the fact as well that I don't I don't know if it's just me, but I don't see a lot of people like just using the plain grass as the terrain. Um, people often tend to change the terrain to sort of rocks or to add a bit of decoration. But I actually think the grass works really well here. Um, but yeah, really like the really like the planting there, and then the queue line going over the top there. Um, well, the fast pass queue, sorry, going over the top while the rest of the people go around. Uh, and then over here we have an Enterprise. Again, just putting the plant in all the way around and just having, it just makes it look nice and neat. And especially with the lighting as well, the lighting going around the, the edge of the path I think looks really nice. So that oh, monorail goes, uh, goes travel some distance, doesn't it? Wow. So that is uh, that is the Enterprise and Sundial. Over here we've got more of a food court. Again, another big open space. Re looks really good and it really separates out the guests as well. They they don't have to like all clog up on the same path. If you if you build your park with one you know with one path sort of this wide here going all the way around, you start putting shops on the side of it and they start the guests start clogging the path up. Um, but Having a big open space like this and pushing the buildings back a bit really, uh, you know, really does help out um, and clear the path. The planting is, is really good. I, li I like how consistent it is and it just kind of, you know, carries on throughout. And then we are on another queue line now. Uh, I've not missed I've not missed a sign or anything. Have I? No, nope, so we're on another queue line. Again, the, the queue line patterns are consistent, and again, it, it's a pattern that works. I think. Wow, this uh, this looks like two dueling coasters. This is going to be fun. There's um, there's some locker storage there. I I did uh, I did pick that up in uh, in my in Michael's park that I did uh, in the Trinity Lake. Um, again, very good use of the barrier um, the barrier fencing. To make it look like lockers because that's what I mean that the storage area like that is what you'd get in a real theme park. Um, in terms of in terms of the station building, it looks it's a really unique looking station. Um, you know, it, rather than it rather than just leaving it as a grid, uh, having the sort of decorations down the sides, I think really, you know, really brings the kind of character out. And then having this sort of like extended bit of roof on top, 
like built on these little supports here I think looks really good I do like that uh, so yin and yang <laughs> great name I love that great name um, wow I mean look at the excitement rate on that is yang any better or so yang isn't as exciting as yin so I'm gonna go on yin <laughs> so we'll hop on there um, and so there, there's the stats and let's just have a look at the other results there you go that's the other results if you are interested uh, and we will hop on and uh, see who wins out of yin and yang That's, that's that's really good. I mean, it's it's impressive to get two coasters like that to be going at the same speed as each other, um, and you've got the two different vehicle types there as well. So I, I really do like that, and the fact that it's over the water on that half, and then it goes over the station and comes back. And I, I, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't think you. I don't think you can on this uh, sort of coaster. But I almost feel like two laps there would be would be really good if you could put a two lap setting on it. Um, just because it's, it's, it's not it's not the longest track and you almost feel like you want to do a bit more as you get back to the station um, but in terms of the dueling you know in terms of the dueling coasters I'm, I think this is the first uh, spotlight I've done with dueling coasters um, but yeah I absolutely love that the white and the red um, and the, the names again are brilliant um, but no they're really really good coasters they are um, as I say it's just a shame that you can't put a sort of like a two lap mode on these coasters because that would be for, for me personally anyway that would be ideal to have the second goal the second lap run um, so from here I just want to make sure I've not missed anything from here we will go out and back down here yep yin yang and that's the queue oh, that so that'll be the queue for the yang then and then what we've got down here we've got a Another monorail station with the food, with the food kind of food shops underneath. Um, another nice use of the building. And there's the queue for the monorail. I do like the number of outdoor. I know I keep saying it. I do like the number of outdoor areas and, and the planting that's used as well. I think it just looks really nice. Um, what have we got here? This is another coaster by the looks of it. We'll go down the fast pass queue. Around. Ooh, this is this is my favourite station building so far. I like this, the glass roof, but then the metal beams going across, the steel beams. I think that looks. I think that looks really good as a as a um, as a station building, and it works really well with the colours on the um, on the ride. So, this is silver bullet. And they are the stats. Green across the board again. Fantastic excitement rating yet again. And we will have a go on Silver Bullet.
really uh, some really good airtime on that on that coaster. I did like the uh, I did like the you know the number of drops around here. Um, I thought some of these uh, you know some of the airtime you get around there. I mean, how many? I'm just going to get the stats up. Let me uh, try and click on the coaster. Where are we? Results. Six. So, yeah, so you got six parts of airtime there. You got the big vertical loop, uh, and then you got a nice bit of sort of uh, underground tunnel here. Uh, the the only thing I would say is at the end of that, it probably a little bit fast coming into that uh, coming into that station. Um, but that's that's probably just trying to get the uh, barrel roll in. I don't know if there's a way to make it a bit longer. Um, I'll probably go around once more, maybe around this section again under, underneath, and then do the barrel roll in. Uh, I do I do think the barrel roll works. I do like the barrel roll there. Um, but uh, I, I, it's probably a little bit just a little bit quick coming in. But I think other than that. I, I love the fact it goes over the monorail. I think that looks really good, um, especially if you, you know, if you were sat on that monorail and this train's coming down. I think the view there would look fantastic. Um, so uh, yeah, no, I, I really like that. That's probably my that's probably my favourite coaster so far. Um, I love the racing coasters. Uh, as I say, I just wish you could do a second lap on them because um, <laughs> because they, they were that good. Um, so we will carry on away from Silver Bullet. We'll go down here, back under yin, yin, and yin and yang. I struggle to say that. Um, that's that's yin and yang there. Another sign. I, I do like the number of signposts. There's a lot of thought going into the signage here. And there's a suspended swinging coaster by the looks of it. So we're in like a purple area now, looking at the ride. Uh, some more food. Shops. I, I love. I love the planting on top. The planting on top of the shops looks fantastic. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the ground floor down here. It looks. It looks just as good up there. I've not seen that before. I also want to point out this hot air balloon. I've not. I've not missed that. The hot air balloon is a great piece of scenery that I don't know anybody that has put one in their park. Um, but it, but it's there. It's in the game. Um, so uh, yeah, really, uh, re really do like that. And when it when it's up, it, it blends in really well with the theme of the park. When you look at it from distance. Um, what I will do before I head over this way onto this purple coaster, which appears to be called Cyclone. Um, I'm going to go on this green one here, just so I don't miss anything, um, and just cover the rest of this. So let's find the start of the queue line for this. That's for the drop tower. Really, uh, really nice views of the park from up there. To be fair, from the uh, from the top of this drop tower, from Ascendance, and then you've got another flat ride just here, nicely suspended. Um, it's just, you know, it's slightly in the air. Mantis, uh, and then I just want to find the entrance to this ride. So, oh hello, there's two, there's two queues here. Oh, that that one's for ascendance. All oh, right, that's a really that's a really nice way of doing it. Rather than having queues everywhere, um, it's a really nice way of uh, kind of splitting people off there. So we'll go up to here. I like I like the green. I like the uh, I like the patterns going on here and and the colours as well. The the different shades of green work really well. Um, so this is Caterpillar. So this looks, this is like a Wendigo coaster. And I am a big fan of Wendigo coasters. I do think that I do think a lot. You know, more people need to use these in the park because they are a great little attraction. Um, this is the first coaster that isn't green across the board. However, that is extremely close, and excitement on these coasters is very hard to reach. So uh, yeah, I, I, that is as good as getting green across the board, I think. So um, yeah, this is uh, this is Caterpillar. And when this when this geezer in the cat wants to let us go, we can uh, see what it's like. Here we go.
I love that. Lovely little, uh, lovely little junior ride there. It doesn't need to be massive because junior coasters that aren't, you know, aren't the biggest um, coasters in, in parks. Um, and it, but it's a really, really nice sort of. Um, it's really eye-catching as well. So when you come in, uh, when you, when you come in from this angle, anyway, you look down and um, you can see there's a really eye-catching track there, and it kind of just takes you. It kind of covers all of these flat rides around here really nicely. So yeah, I do, I do, I do like that. And the, the station building again, rather than just making it, you know, a box, having these little circles on, having these sort of beams on, the you know the, the art decor, um, just looks, you know, just looks really nice. I do, uh, I do really like that. So from here, oh, what have we got down here? I was going to head over to the, uh, oh blimey, this is a busy ride. I was going to head head over to the uh, purple ride, but looks like we have got one more. We have a car ride. Sunset. So this is Sunset Boulevard. Oh wow, this is. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to sit on on all of this ride, but I will. Uh, I will go and have a look at the track, see what's uh, going off. This is a really, uh, really long car ride. I do I do like this. I like the I like the road signs that are, that we use down there. And then Sunset Boulevard. I mean, Sunset Boulevard in America. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is um, you know, is is filled with like palm trees like this. Hence why, uh, hence why she's called it that. You got the traffic lights there. The pedestrian crossing. And then go back over here under the monorail, over the exit, and back in. Yeah, really, uh, really like that. And the, the building, the building suits it as well. The building looks really nice. Um, Again, and the, the cars as well, the sort of cars you'd see on Sunset Boulevard as well. It's having this the sort of vintage looking car, so yeah, really, uh, really do like that. So, we shall now head to what I believe is going to be the last ride, which is Cyclone. So where do we get on Cyclone? Over here. Got the fast pass queue. Again, having having this this queue line on on all of the rides has has worked so well. If you are going to repeat one queue line over over two rides, you've then got to start repeating at, at least the sort of similar design over them all because otherwise it looks a bit weird if you've only done it for, for one or two. Um, but if you are going to you know if you are going to do different ones, that's fine. But if you are going to do the same, do exactly what Jasmine's done here and just kind of repeat. Your station, you know, your queue line building. Because it, I mean, it, it works a treat. Again, I love the gap between these paths. I think that works really well. Um, and then th this building here with the signage looks looks fantastic. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is Cyclone, which is a suspended swinging coaster. Green stats across the board. It's not really a surprise anymore because clearly uh, Jasmine knows how to get green uh, coasters on this game. There's the stats for the coaster, if you are interested. Um, other than that, we shall hop in and take a look on Cyclone on this coaster.
I'll tell you what, that is the first time I've seen a swinging coaster as, as big as that. Swing, I mean, to be honest, I don't see many people make swinging coasters because they are very, um, they're very strange coasters in terms of they don't, they don't have any inversions. Um, but it's, it's a really, uh, but it's not like a wooden coaster where you can make like a huge one. Um, However, the drops on this are, are huge, and it, I've not seen one built like that before. So yeah, really, uh, really did enjoy that as a as something different. It the, the purple looks fantastic, um, and the lighting underneath here as well. You got the different floodlights lighting up the area, so that look that looks spot on. Um, but yeah, definitely, uh, I, I love the theme, and I love the, um, the theme like the purple theme of the station and the ride. I think it looks fantastic. But uh, yeah, in terms in terms of the uh, swinging coaster, I've, I've not seen one like that before, and I think I think it works really well actually as a, as a big layout. It's very hard to control the swing on the bends, um, so I, I I don't really know how, how to control that any better um, without without filling it with brakes. But then when you fill it with brakes, the ratings go down, so it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky. But I mean, like, like here, I love this bend around here around the edge of the track. I think. I mean, if it, if I if I could change that in one way, it'd be the fact that I would. It'd be nice to see more of the track over the rest of the park because I think this bend here, hanging over the hanging over the pathway, and the shops works really well. Um, but I appreciate the, the the shape of it. You you don't want to crowd out. You don't want to crowd out the rest of the park by doing that. So uh, no, really, I really do like that. Um, but yeah, I believe that is. Uh, that is it for uh, Silver Key. Really, really nice park. Um, some really good themed areas and coasters. I do like um, I do like the the racing coasters here. And Silver Bullet was was those two were probably my favourites. Um, and I do like the you know the, the seating areas and the, and the planting. And some of the station designs are very different to what I've seen before, which you know which I do enjoy. Um, so yeah, if you did enjoy that. Um, as I say, I will leave a link to m &J Games in the description below. Uh, go and check out Jasmine and her husband Michael's um, videos over there. Um, and other than that, I shall see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.